Today's episode is sponsored by the Christian Standard Bible. The goal of the CSB is to be faithful to the original languages without sacrificing clarity, all the while maintaining both accuracy and readability. With beautiful designs and multiple study Bible options, everyone, from adults to teens to children, can find a CSB Bible that they enjoy. Learn more at csbible.com. Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. This is Mark Hyde. And Chris Fuller. And on today's episode, we are revisiting the seven deadly sins. We've talked about lust. We've talked about pride. I guess it's time to talk about gluttony. Fuller, you ready? Let's go! What's up, Fuller? What's going on, Mark? Well, two things. One, I feel like I have T-Rex arms right now. <laughs> <laughs> as as those who watch on YouTube know, we got the new studio. Every single, I guess every grouping of two episodes, we have a different camera angle, different setup. We're getting there. But, dude, you have done a nice job with this studio, I'm, man. I'm working Janiel, on it. Janiel, too. Janiel has we're, done a lot of work We're still working out a few small, minor bug details in the setups, but we'll get there. But you added another light. We dropped the sign down. I'm thinking I might get you a small table over on that side. For the roadcaster? Like, For the roadcaster. And then we'd run the cables, or maybe under and then over. That would work. Something like but that. But either way, we are here, Anyways. and but trying to unmute and mute everything, I legit <laughs> had to like T-Rex arm everything well, just so I wouldn't bump everything. Well, that was like the Dudes and Dads podcast. I sat in my chair, like when I did the intro. Uh-huh. And I'm sitting here like trying to do the roadcaster upside down and the camera. And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it no. was phenomenal. But either way, welcome back, my friend. Or I should say to welcome you. to me. Welcome, welcome back. And I am in your house. By the way, if you haven't checked out the Instagram reel from a few weeks ago. <laughs> well, at, th- at time of publishing, that was like a month ago. Okay, it was like a month ago, but it was hilarious. And my kids ask for it all the time. They're like, Dude, Daddy, they really? it was so funny, Daddy. Daddy, you are so funny. Daddy, did you really eat my candy? I'm like, I had four pieces, enough to do the video. <laughs> Just calm down. <laughs> Dude, you were making out with Sour Patch Kids. That's really what it was. But if you look at the camera, funny, funny little tidbit here. Okay. When you look at the camera, I throw three Sour Patch Kids into my mouth. Uh-huh. The first one makes it. The second two drop out. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's I was, just like, I was like rolling over. <laughs> like, well, this didn't work out as planned, but yeah. <laughs> so we're trying to step up the social media game we're, a little we're bit. We're working to reach on it. We're working people. on it. And I've got some plans in the work to step up some other small little tidbitty things throughout the week also. I just need a good day. Like a good day to... To say, oh, and you, like, mean a, you mean a good day with no bring no up family and no work? And man, how, when do you get those? Not, well, Janelle gave me one yesterday. She, really? her and the kids, I got off of work and while well, I was off work yesterday, and her and the kids went to her sister's house for lunch. And then she had a doctor's appointment, but she had already arranged, pre arranged all this for the kids to go hang out at her sister's house to play with their cousins. And I had, that's why, like, I got all this you stuff done because yourself. that's why I got a lot of other stuff done because I had the extra time. So yeah, when I get like complete silent times, which are far and few in between, which I'm okay with because I love hanging out with my family. But when I do get those times, it's like, I get a lot done. <laughs> I don't, okay. So whenever I'm by myself, cause I even told Beth this, I'm like, I'm totally okay. Like if she wants to go out do things like, dude, you got a life, go sure. enjoy it. So, so she's very, she is very good about it. It's like, Hey, so I made plans so I won't be here Wednesday night. Cool, cool. awesome. Yeah. But every time she's gone at night, if I'm not working, like, like actual work that I get paid for, mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't know what to do with myself. Now, now she has a wonderful honey do list that she's like, I know what you could be doing. Yeah. But I'm like, but to recoup, it's like I don't, I just don't know what to do. So I normally re- like <laughs> revert back to, okay, I guess I'll watch college basketball or Madam Secretary and eat some popcorn. I guess, I, I guess that's what I'm going to do. Sometimes I do that. But so I don't always know what to do when I'm just by myself with free time. I yeah. Don't always know what to to do me, it. it's like, okay, I got free time. I'm going to invest it into podcasting. <laughs> and that's so, fair. That's what I do. That's fair. But so, you know, a lot of you guys though are starting to find us on Instagram and Facebook yeah. and whether or not that's from our ridiculous reels or our posts or whatever, or 
what a lot of people do, they find us the, just the audio or on YouTube, and then they come and join us over on, or, on Instagram. Or find us on Spotify. Right, and that's I the mean, thing. That's so the many thing. of you guys, if you're listening to just audio, not video, so many of you guys have been reaching out to us over the last, I would say, what, two months? Mm -hmm. And you guys have been sending emails and DMs, and every single time we go, hey, how'd you find the show? You guys are like, Spotify, Spotify, Spotify. Spotify. So our like, Spotify awesome. family is growing like crazy. It is, and I'm so excited for that. But So if you are on Spotify, we'll just do the housekeeping things now. Sure. Just leave us a rating, man. Like yeah. Apple, Apple iTunes, you can leave a rating review, but Spotify, you can leave just a rating. And if you really, really like the podcast, head over to the Apple podcast and just throw us a review. That's, that way. that's what I'm saying. Or just, you know, share the, your favorite episode with somebody that you love. And if you're on Instagram and want to share stuff too, go for it. Like we're going to be putting out more reels over the next up and coming months. And uh, some of them be funny. Some of them might be teaching. I, I haven't quite decided how I'm going to do all that. Hmm. It's probably going to be a lot of me. Because you don't have that kind of time. I am okay with that, man. Well, I'm running two, like this podcast yeah. and another podcast. And, and a business. And, and a and business. Yeah, and, so I've got a little bit well, more time to do some stuff. Not a whole lot more time, but a little bit more time. And so, yeah, it'll be... It's a team uh, effort, boss. Uh, team try effort. to throw some more content out to our listeners and make them viewers on top of listeners. So that's that's kind of the goal and the name of the game. And so how about this? I'll, I'll just ask the question to our, our podcast and YouTube family. If there is any question that you guys have, please ask us those questions. Because let's be honest, Fuller and I can sit here. We can talk about the stuff that we want to talk about all day. All day. But y'all might be bored. And, you so. know, <laughs> the episode we're doing tonight is an episode we've mentioned several, several times over previous podcasts yeah. and, that we were going to do. And that was a long time ago. And so now Dude, I checked the last it. episode that we did from the seven deadly sins was like 50 or 40, 50 episodes ago. So yeah. So it's been a while. It's been, it's been almost a year. Oh, my, wow. And so yes, because, and it's been great because it's been a lot of the content we've been putting out is questions from our listeners. Mm -hmm. They're like, Hey, we got this question. Uh, actually next week's question and last week's question both came from Directly listeners. Directly from listeners. Uh, and that's most of the time we write podcasts and, and do the podcasts or questions that you listeners have and so we want to make sure your questions are answered <laughs> that's that's what we're here to do you know we're here to like have conversation and we've said it so many times right dude where it's like we're not trying to be the church we're not trying to be the only influence in your life but right. at the same time we want to come alongside you in your faith journey and and answer questions that you have or just let's be honest sometimes you just need someone to just walk alongside you and just you listening on a conversation sure. you know and and sometimes people agree with us and sometimes they don't but and hey it's okay it's at least it's a challenging thought <laughs> exactly. And I know that's the way you feel the podcast you listen to and the ones that I listen sure. to is the fact of, you know, I engage in these podcasts all the time and right. we always tell people we want people to engage with us. So if you send us a message on Facebook or Instagram or an email, we do our very best to get back with you. And for those that are still listening who we haven't gotten back to, we have a backlog right now, <laughs> but we will slowly and surely get through everybody. Uh, it is our intent to uh, try to respond to people every week as much as possible, but we're getting a lot more uh, activity, which is great. Every day we're um, getting something. So if we have not gotten to you yet, please be patient. And even if we haven't gotten to you and it's been like a month, right is back. Send man. us another email because we may have lost it in all the jumble. Which and that's what happened with uh, uh, Todd. Was that his name over on Instagram, Liam? Oh, I don't remember his name. Wrote us a message and then he's like, "Hey, he's so like, what hey, are your thoughts about it?" We're like, "Oh, oh goodness." Uh, and I, we always apologize because we do not intend to ever miss anybody's question but we had missed his his question and so he's like hey i haven't heard from you guys what's going on and like you guys are gonna answer this and it's like oh so sorry and we answered it right then and there and um sometimes that's what it is so if you prod us and you know squeaky wheel gets the grease kind of thing <laughs> you know so ask again <laughs> i i love it man well hey so before we move on to the review and the what what the, what's the game we've been playing Oh, the party cues. Party cues. I forgot about that. We got to give another shout out to our great friend up there in Canada. Sabrina. Sabrina. We're drinking your coffee tonight Again. from Nicaragu this yes. Nicaraguan. Yes. Okay. I got to say, whatever that one coffee is that I can't pronounce, that's like in the the the, the bourbon barrel. The, the brandy barrels. The, uh, oh yeah. The, whatever it is. So confession. Sometimes when I make coffee for the family, I use coffee that is good, but it's not that. And then when I make coffee for just myself, I use that. <laughs> yeah because that stuff is good so sabrina we we just want to say thank you for sending us this coffee you know it sounds like we've been drinking it for months and months and months and months and months but we we really haven't because we batch record yes it's been weeks and weeks and weeks it's been well weeks it's, and weeks and it's weeks. been i mean it was christmas time so i mean we got we, we got this the the the, the the peddler bicycle what was the name of that one coffee that was in the black bag that we finished up recently i don't know 
I was out there in Virginia. Either. That was really good. That too. was really good. We got this stuff that we were drinking from Canada. So if you want to send us coffee, we're always down you for can that. Do that, or you know, just like always, our friends down at Brute Forward Coffee Co. Hit them up. Use that code RTC to get ten percent off. Not subscription, just normal bags. Yep. But all the proceeds go towards helping kids just take a next step, either out of foster care or they're they've aged out of the system. They're trying to figure out a transitional piece. All their proceeds go to that. So check right. out BruteFordCoffeeCo.com. Good you stuff. like that stuff? I did. Why don't you go ahead and just pick oh. one of these categories here, and we'll go ahead and um, do the party cues right now. This is going to sound bad. I'm picking the martini glass. Wow. What does that say when you click on it? Date night. <laughs> <laughs> We're okay. going for it, man. Real it's talk. It's date night. It's date night with a martini glass. Is All it right. dirty or is it clean? It, it, is it a dirty martini with espresso this in is, it? This is kind of an know. easy one for both of us to okay. answer. Well, it should be easy. Okay. And if it's not, then there's I'm kind of nervous, to be honest with you. Who do you hug most often? Who do I hug most often besides my wife? No, it just says, who do you hug most often? Janelle. Beth. <laughs> I told you it was going to be easy. Which kid? Which kid do you, do you probably get the most hugs to? Um, I would say the kids that come up to me to hug me the most often is probably Noel and Shiloh. Really? They're probably the ones that come up to me the most often. Hmm. Now, if I had my choice, I'd hug all of them all the time. But I'm saying the ones that run to you, like they're like hugs. Yeah, all the time. It's it's Shiloh and Noel. Yeah, mine is Nora and Evie because Nora always, when she's about to get in trouble, I tell her to do something. Hug, <laughs> hug first. <laughs> okay, I, I will not say no to a hug. Right. So probably Nora and Evie. All right, you ready for the next question? Is it still date night? It's still date. Oh, we're night. We're still on a date. Oh, uh, what do you? <laughs> I can pay for my dinner. This one's a little awkward. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. What do you do with me that makes you happy? <laughs> I podcast with you, <laughs> and you podcast with me. There we go. I'm done with that one. <laughs> I'm trying to think. of I'm like, how do I answer this? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> what do I do with you is probably my favorite what, thing. Yeah, pod, what, I mean, that's what podcast. do you do with me that makes you happy? I mean, it's podcast. That's yeah. what we do. Yeah, that's that's literally that's what we do. <laughs> I will say this though, you know, and I, I says many times like. This podcast, I know it's been encouragement to a lot of other people that are listening, but it's been a huge encouragement for me going through some, and we'll talk about this in the next episode of depression and all that kind of stuff too, right. of what got me out of a lot of funks is knowing that I get to see you every single week, even during COVID, and we just get to talk about Jesus and life and all those things. So mm. thank you, buddy. Thank you. All right. One more. Date night still? One more. You want to do a different one? No. let's. I'm, right. I'm, just, I'm, I'm preparing myself right. to- this one's not bad. You know. This one's an interesting question. I'm going to let you go first. Okay. If you could do something dangerous just once with no risk, what would you do? With no risk? With no risk. Tell Beth to make me a sandwich. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Wow. Honestly, and that's the podcast. Note, <laughs> side note, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That was, that was bad. But side note, she did you know that if you do a grilled sandwich and you do like Miracle Whip, on the outside of the bread and fry it that way, it instantly makes your sandwich a thousand times better. I always fry it with it on the inside. Like oh, no, Beth when does I make both. So when I do like a grilled cheese, right? Mm -hmm. It's cheese, it's mayonnaise, mm -hmm. it's tomato, mm -hmm. and it's bacon. So next time you do it, do mayo on the outside too. Well, I don't do it anymore. But no, but I'm if dieting. I do one thing, <laughs> if I had to do one thing dangerous, knowing that everything would be okay. Uh, we talked about it last time, but bungee jumping. Would you? I'd, I'd bungee jump off of a cliff or a, or a bridge, 100%. If uh, I knew I wasn't going to die, yeah, 100%. I would probably 100%. I would probably do like the shark cage. Oh, like going I didn't down think about that. And do like, put me in the middle of a shark Or how much, like the evil can evil type stuff? Well, I've done a bunch of like risky stuff like that, but like... Sw swimming with sharks. Sw well, I swam with sh like little sharks, but, like, but I'm talking about like the, the big, great, great white. whites, the megalodon type. That'd be big pretty boys. cool. That'd be pretty cool. And like put me in the cage <laughs> and, and chum it up all around me. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty. But, but I would say probably bungee jumping. Yeah. I think that'd be enough That's of a, a that would be enough of an exhilarating thrill ride. Sure. But before we get in the conversation, we've talked about leaving a podcast review over there on Apple iTunes. But I want to read some more because we actually got a couple more in here. Yeah, buddy. This one is from Doc MD8, and it says these guys are a blessing. I found myself in the most difficult situation from a health perspective that I could have ever imagined. God put on my heart immediately that I needed to draw closer to him and change many of the influences influence I had that were not from him. I went to my phone and just typed in Christian podcast and Real Talk Christian podcast was the first thing to come up and I have not stopped listening to it since. I can't tell you guys how much you have blessed me with your real examples of the struggles Christians go through 
and the questions that we all have. You guys to speak God's message has helped me get through some very dark times. Thank you for all you do. God bless. That's cool. What was the name again? Doc M D numerical eight. Do- I'm just gonna call him. I'm gonna call him Doc. Doc. Hey Doc, thanks for reaching out to us. If you get us your address, which we haven't had anybody reach out with their nope, with their info here lately, but if you reach out to us either through email, DM, you know, whatever your private we'll messaging, s- we'll send it for text them. message. You send us your name and address, and we got a little mini swag bag. And actually, I've been looking at up in the game a little bit here. I haven't worked out all the details yet, but we might be up in the game. For our mini and, swag bags and, and up in it? Yeah, for the minis and actually going to a ma- having a magnet and an actual little mini swag bag. Because right now, <laughs> it's just like we put it in like a small envelope. And, that's, and then we send it, But yeah. I'm talking about like an like that. Thanks, Lifeway. Lo- yeah, so. That would be really cool. Up and even if you bit. are from South Africa but now live in the States, Raina, we can get you your mini swag bag now, too. <laughs> That's right. So so. I, I had to get that little shout out. But, no, seriously, for all you guys to leave all these Apple podcast reviews, we are up, up to 70. 73. Oh, we're 73. We're at 73 oh, wow, now. We're 72 this morning when right. I checked. So that's what I'm saying. Because like we always, we always one check. One was just dropped. We always check the morning of or usually the, sometime during the day when we're going to record. And I checked this morning to find, figure out what the next review you know, that we're gonna one read just came through so wow. remember when we get to that 100th review we're giving away another study bible yeah i think there was other stuff we were giving away too wasn't there or was that the hundred thousand i think that was the hundred thousand dollars okay i can't remember which one i gotta go back and listen to that and figure out yeah, which one it was we probably should start listening to what we're saying <laughs> so either way let's jump in the conversation so we have talked about the seven deadly sins and we always about, oh we're gonna do a series and we're gonna do a series on it and yeah you've been, been hitting on this gluttony thing for a while and i'm wondering is it because i'm fat no, <laughs> it's because I grew up in the independent fundamental Baptist world one where they literally brag about how much steak and meat they eat. And yeah, it's all about the church potluck. It's all about the church potluck. So to to prelude it, you, you said you wanted to prelude, yeah, prelude this, this thing, man. Prelude the episode. We're not fat shaming. No, <laughs> this is not. We're not coming on to fat shame or to talk about uh, people and their struggle with weight. My, me, myself, I'm on a diet right now. I str- I've struggled with weight my whole life. Um, so I think that makes me qualified to, to kind of give rebuttals. If there's going to be rebuttals on here, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of stand on the rebuttal side <laughs> for those who want to make excuses because I myself am, have but always struggled with weight. once we get onto the definition of true gluttony, I think we'll see that it's a little different than sure. just eating food. Sure. You know, now that obviously has a plays a part into it. Right. But the next thing is we don't want to fat shame. We don't want to sit here and say, if you're overweight, you're obviously in sin. Because, right. you know, there's there's a lot of things that go into it. Like I even knew, um, you know, our old worship pastor, Brendan, I know like he was talking about issues and that certain medications can make you gain weight or, you know, based well, on this, that, and the th- other. Thyroid issues can make, yeah, exactly. make you not lose weight. I got a I got a guy that I work with. Being a website um, developer where you sit at a desk all day long. Well, I've Oof. got a guy that I work with that he, I mean, we're, we're the two fattest guys in the group and we have the hardest job and the hottest job, but, uh, he does the intermittent fasting, like fast oh, for eight, really? 18 hours. He's okay. And like when he, when he gets off and what he eats, it's like lean proteins, fruits and vegetables. And the dude's still over 350 pounds, cannot lose weight because he's got some sort of medical issue going on. Wow. He's been trying for years to lose weight because he used to be real skinny and buff and he cannot lose weight. So there definitely are medical issues that cause people from not losing weight. Or just someone's you know chemical makeup and biology. Sure, and sure. And so, and yeah, sometimes it's just in the DNA. I mean, my whole family, all the men in my, my family going back have always been heavier set. And mm-hmm. so sometimes it's just your body makeup. Um, and that's not what we're talking about, okay? Nope. Just because your obesity is is kind of tied with gluttony a little bit, a little more than a little bit, but uh, I would say in today's culture, not, when people say you're a glutton, that means you're you're you know sure. Uh, well, they also say glutton for punishment, and that's not <laughs> you know. There, there's other t- you've never heard the glutton for, you're a glutton for punishment. How old are you again? You've never heard that before? No. Wow. Okay. I just told you, you better shut up. You're going to get beat. That's not actually, no, that's not actually not true. Mama that, was not. Is that, that what bad. Beth says to you? <laughs> <laughs> I want to make a, uh, we're done with the date night question. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. So that <laughs> was, was the, so bad. Th- that's the prelude to this yeah, episode before so, we dive but, into But it. the idea with it though, is the fact of whether or not 
the seven deadly sins are biblical or not, these have been passed down from generation to generation inside of the church. And so I just want to simply have the question of is why were these deemed the seven deadly sins? Sure. And are they even justified? Because we talked about in the very first one we did, which was on pride episode 81, go back to it, link in the show notes. We talked about the fact that the seven deadly sins are not a passage of scripture, right? It's and, and technically the Catholic church does even call them, but they, they call them deadly sins now, but they're actually were the cardinal sins because by which all other sins that are it's committed for- stem from these. It's a form of Catholic catechism. Yeah, so That's so so is. we'll just review really quick. So this is the same exact review that we read um, from the Lust episode about just what the seven deadly sins are. This is from Got- <laughs> our friends over at gotquestions.org, which, side note, they have a new website. It is glorious. They, they did a great job with it. Um, in terms of searchability, like they, they just upped the game. So uh, this is a direct quote from them. It says, according to Catholic theology... The seven deadly sins are seven vices or negative character qualities that left unchecked will result in a host of other sins that will eventually kill a person's soul. The seven deadly sins are pride, envy, gluttony, lust, anger, greed, and slothfulness. The list was first delineated by Pope Gregory the Great in the 6th century, and then Thomas Aquinas later expounded on the idea. In the late 14th century, Dante which um, Dante Inferno, you know, that book, mm-hmm. Dante wrote his epic poem, Inferno, oh, I should have just kept reading. Um, Dante wrote his epic poem, Inferno, in which he pictured purgatory as having seven Terrences corresponding to each of the seven deadly sins. The seven deadly sins are also called the seven capital sins or the seven, which in the, in the actual Catholic catechism, right. it says the seven cardinal sins. Cardinal, in this context, meanings of basic importance or extremely grave. The seven deadly sins are considered to be the most basic sins that uh, plague humanity and the sins that are most likely to beset us. Each of the seven deadly sins leads to other sins. So they even say, like, this was a list that was just curated and by which all of these other sins, by which these sins stem to a bunch of other sins. So they deemed gluttony as one of the seven deadly sins. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to be honest with you, like pride, envy, lust, anger, greed, slothfulness. I mean, we, we, we can kind of laziness. Yeah. We can kind of take those six and go, okay, we can see how those sins can lead to other sins. And in terms of what does a pride do? We, we talked a lot about pride in this, well, and, in the show. And with you know? those other sins, right? So pride, envy, lust, anger, greed, and slothfulness, laziness. We see a numerous amounts of, of scriptures to back those 100%. ones up. And and those normally affect other people. Sure. When you when when you are acting in pride or lust or anger or greed, those are normally sins that result in hurting or affecting somebody else. Sure. But gluttony is one of those where we go, okay, so what really is it? Is it really that big of a deal? Is it really like what is gluttony, you know, in terms of most people think, oh, gluttony is just eating a crap load of McDonald's. Like that's what being a glutton is. And, well, and, you know, I've also heard, you know, you can be a glutton with wealth. Oh, you know, where you got to have more and, that's, and more. That's what wealth. I want to go into. Yeah, and glutton with. I mean, so it's not always. It a lot of it nowadays we attribute with food, but I don't know if it was always attributed with food back then. I mean, I know some cultures it was. But it was primarily some, some cultures. And, and so I have a good definition for that. But before we go into the definition of gluttony, here's where I think a good outline for the episode would go. So we're going to tell you what we're going to tell you. We're going to tell you, and then we're going to repeat it. So. Here's kind of the five points of today's conversation I think would be good is what is a definition of gluttony? Like just what, what is a definition of it? Wow. Coffee got stuck in my throat. What did gluttony often mean in antiquity and in poorer cultures is gluttony mentioned in the Bible at all? And is it a sin is gluttony the same as obesity? And then I just have some general conversation questions to, to close out the today's podcast. Okay. Sounds good. All right, so here's the definition of gluttony that I have. And this comes from Christianity Today, I believe. I didn't put the links directly with the quotes, but all the links will be in the show notes. It says, uh, wrong one. Gluttony is defined as the overindulgence or lack of self-restraint in food, drink, or wealth items, especially as status tokens. The English word comes from the Latin to mean to gulp. Gluttony, gluttony worships food to feed our own self-love. Merriam-Webster defines gluttony as habitual greed or excess in eating, greedy or excessive indulgences. Now, just just off the bat, do you, like, do you think that's a fair definition of gluttony? Would you add? Would you take away? Yeah, I mean, the, the, I, I like the first sentence. The thing that I can see is is 
greedy, excel, excessive indulgence. So I could excessively indulge in a multiple, multitude of sin, you know, of pride, of uh, sexual encounters with people. Mm. I mean, that was a big thing back during this time. Oh, yeah. Was that that's what they did a lot. Is And so that to me, that's what I'm saying. Like, I could see glutton back then meaning a lot more than just food. Oh, 100%. And, you know, in our culture, in Western culture, it's also easy for us to think of food because I mean, like I was, I'll bring it up here in a second, but looking at the stats, America in terms of the amount of the, the percentage of our annual income that goes to food, it's so low. Like it's one of the lowest countries in the world by how much money we make versus the amount of money that we spend on food per year. Cause mm-hmm. when you look in like the African countries and third world countries, some of them spend up to 40 to 50% of their income just on food. Not, not great, a lot of abundance food, but literally sometimes half their income just goes towards feeding themselves. Well, when you only make $2 a day, yeah. (laughs) Well, well, exactly. And so, and that's kind of where it goes into the next part of the conversation of what did gluttony often mean in antiquity and not just gluttony in general, but in terms of even just, um, size, I guess is the best way to do it. I don't want to say like, you know, fat, that's not true, but normally in, in old in, in other cultures, generally the larger of a person you were means the more wealthy that you are. Like some people think, um, uh, Ehud, the, the the prophet when he killed um, who was the ki- who was the uh, king that he killed, it, Agag. I don't. Know. Had, I don't know, but, but the fact that he was so large mm-hmm. that when he put the dagger in, that his like stomach ate the dagger, mm-hmm. and then you know he he crapped himself. It, it's a wonderful story. The left handed prophet. Um, but people talk about that with the fact that that's one of the cases and points where it's the fact that you have so much riches that you don't care about anybody else that you only mm-hmm. care about yourself. And that's why they, they, they think it comes from that. But I got this as a quote from another, another, another resource. And it says, generally speaking in countries that are not flowing with tons of money and opportunity, being well-rounded is a sign of wealth. In ancient times, the more well-off you were, the more you were able to buy food and uh, afford and often obesity meant wealth. In today's culture, where culture spend large percentage of incomes on simply buying food, the bigger you are, the better off you are. And and just to prove it, I actually found this quote on Quora, which is, you know, you can ask questions and it's kind of like a Reddit style right. thing. And there's a guy, uh, he answered this question five years ago. So he's like 34 now living in Kenya. He said, I'm probably the best person to answer this question about just the size of does your size match your wealth? And he said, I'm probably the best person to answer this. And here's why. I live in a society where obesity is associated with opulence or abundance. If you're from Kenya, you'll probably relate to what I'm about to say. And this isn't his whole quote. It's just a part of it. It says, I recently watched a series on BBC documentaries on taboo and was surprised to see the great lengths that American models go just to get skinny. Yes, young American women were dieting just to be anorexic. Now, these are his words, not mine. In my part of the world, being skinny is definitely not sexy. In other words, even if you had a wonderful personality, being skinny would automatically make you hard to want. Just like that item at a thrift store that nobody buys. The inverse is also true. Being overweight makes you a hotcake. Extra body fat is an indication that you're a person of means, that you can afford to eat whatever you want, whenever you want. Lifestyle disease, you ask? Oh, please, no one gives a... Rats patootie. Rat, there you go. Rats butt about that. It's serenity now and sanity later. Being overweight is perceived as being wealthy. So, you know, it's one of those things where, and the only reason why I bring that up is when we talk about gluttony and overindulgence and all these different things, But is that part of the, the, the nature why it's one of the seven deadly sins that it also leads to I think, almost bragging about your I status? think you're missing I think a lot of these people are missing the point of it though okay uh, and they've said it over and over again gluttony is an overindulgence right it means and I think this is why the church probably added it it means you have wealth but you're not sharing wealth. and that's why I bring this up right yeah so it's it has nothing to do with obesity or food it has to do with you have wealth that you are not sharing and as Christians we are supposed to be givers mm-hmm. so we shouldn't be takers and always hoard and and back then, it would have been a sign of hoarding or of and, keeping and that's to and that's exactly why I brought that up. Now, right. of course, in third world countries where food is scarce, sure. it's them it's, hoarding it's, again. It's, exactly. it's the same it's, thing. It's the same but it's a different culture because here, right? Poor people can be really overweight here in America. Right, because it's, it's a different cheaper culture. to buy McDonald's than it is. Heck to buy yeah, it is. Food. You know how expensive it is to buy organic 
like health food. I it, don't. It's way more. Yeah, I don't. I, well, because you don't struggle with weight. But I do. Well, I mean, I don't because of how expensive it is. Well, I know. But what I'm saying is, is a lot of people that are healthy and, and eat right and stuff over here are well off because they can afford those things because a lot of us can't afford those types of things. So it's a total different culture. So so let's lean into that. I mean, let, let's get off the, 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 the structure of the conversation a little bit. So because, you know, these sins are listed as the seven deadly sins because sure. by which other sins easily come out of. Sure. So do from what I'm hearing you say, it's the fact of what, what's the great command? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. G- being a glutton... Uh, obviously I, has something to do with food and partaking, but it's more the fact of you're hoarding it I would to yourself more than loving others as yourself. If and we were, sharing if it. we were to update gl- the word gluttony in okay. American culture, right? I think we could replace the word gluttony with selfishness, pride, envy, selfishness, lust, anger, greed, slothfulness, laziness. Hmm. Okay. Because you're being selfish with what you have, right? right. You're hoarding to yourself. You're, you're overindulging in whatever well, it is. Well, it kind of sounds like that one guy in the parable where he had storehouses upon storehouses upon storehouses. Right. So he just kept building bigger and bigger and bigger so barns. So if, if you take scripture, uh, right? Is that Matthew 7? Well, I, I think that I think that's I part of the, the choose, choose the kingdom of God. Probably. You know, it, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's probably after you know, over the, the Sermon on the Mount type of thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, – if you look at the entirety of scripture, right, there's not a whole lot that goes, I mean, look at all the feasts that, that the Jewish people have, right? <laughs> right, yeah. It's feast. It's not small, tiny little, me- it's feast. It's like we're getting together to feast. Yeah, yeah. and I even quote right here from the, the Gospel Coalition where it says, there are Old Testament feasts and visions of heavenly feasts. I mean, the the, the feasts of the, the, the marriage supper of the Lamb. Right, exactly. That's, that's one so, argument for Jesus might be Baptist. I don't think that necessarily, I mean... Yes, you should not overeat because it's unhealthy, right? So there is an aspect. There's an aspect to being obese and gluttonous and and that type of overfeeding yourself to make you unhealthy because we're supposed to take care of our bodies as being the temple of the Lord. And for different people, that means different things, right? Mm-hmm. So for skinny people, that means that, uh, you know, don't eat a whole cake in one sitting, Okay, that's that would be if you ate a whole that cake. That sounds awful. But that's what I'm saying. Like that would be a little, probably a little bit too much. But you can have a piece of cake for a person like me. If I have a piece of cake, my weight's going up. Mm. Doesn't matter oh, how hard I, I die. You yeah. know what I mean? So uh, there's a huge there's a huge difference between body type, like we talked about in the beginning. But if I I think what what this catechism originally talking about we and you've done several quotes here about oh well this means status and wealth and this is what all these descriptions of it are, I think it's talking about the very thing, the rich young ruler, I think. You know, give everything you have and oh, follow yep. me. Mm-hmm. Sell everything you have, get to the poor and follow me. And he went away and sad he, because he owned a great deal of material He wealth. would be a glutton. Like, that was a glutton. He had more than he what he needed, right? And Christ called him to give everything and give everything up and follow him. And instead, he decided to hoard and keep everything so, that he had. So let me push back on that a little bit. So at what point, though, is... Because, you know... We, uh, this is an American Western problem of sure. saving for retirement and, mm-hmm. you know, trying to have your 401k and you got your, you know, 401bs and all, all these different numbers that you have your investment portfolios and Pensions, all these different things. Right. And, you know, and we want to save for rainy days and be wise sure. with that and also Good save. Good stewards. And, and I know you have the exact same heartbeat with me is yeah. I want to make sure that I am leaving something for my children as well. So that legacy. Way, yeah. I, and I don't want to just leave a legacy of money, but at the same time, it helps. Sure. You know, to help get yeah. the kids go, even if they can get a little bit to go to college. Well, we see you know? that. We see that even with the prodigal son. There was an inheritance, right? Yeah. Throughout scripture, there's always been an inheritance, which means that there was something. Right. That the, the, the father had that he was able to inherit to the, to the children. So at what point is saving not to hoard and be a glutton, but to be wise with. And I th- At what point do you cross over from being wise to being a glutton? So I think it's to the point of what has God called of you. Okay. Right? So for through, through Abraham, through the prodigal son story, all these different things that have happened through Scripture, there has been an inheritance which shows signs of wealth, right? But then we get to the rupture and ruler, and Christ says, "Give up, sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and follow me. Mm. And so he's calling them to do something, right? Mm-hmm. He's saying, hey, do this. And the guy said, no. So I think that's where the line's at. Whatever. Are you willing? Are you, one, willing? And if God calls you to give up everything or, hey, Mark, I want you to give $10,000 to this church. 
if Christ calls you to do that and you have it, right? I'm, I'm not, about to say, I'm like, I'm, your th- boy ain't got that. No, this is just, <laughs> this is a story. Right. If, <laughs> but if, 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 if you had $10,000 yes. and Christ goes, give this $10,000 to this church or to this offering or to this mission or whatever it may be, and you say no, then now you're a glutton. Or if you see a need in the church that you could help take care of and you don't take care of it, now you're a glutton. And I think that's where it's at. I think it's that. That's why I said, that you, I think you could replace that, that word glutton with selfishness. And then it would fit the seven deadly sins. You know, I'm going back to this definition of define as overindulgence, lack, lack of self-restraint, you right. know. And I know a lot of people who, um, you know, their families are just, you know, for lack of a better word, big boned. You know, like right. they bra shoulders, like there's some, like, like they're just like, like me, I'm a little person. I'm, I was always born little. I'm always going to be little. Like yeah. that's just who I am. I'm not, a, I'm not. If I ate the shoulder. way you ate, I'd be 600 pounds. No, not anymore, man. I've had to slow it down since I turned almost 30. Well, like 28, I had to slow it down. It was bad. Man, you used to eat cereal all the time I'd come I over, and you'd be like, I can't I, I can't even have a bowl of cereal. cereal. Really? <laughs> no. I'll gain weight if I and have see, a bowl of cereal. And see, and that's what I'm saying. So it's not the fact of what we're eating or right. how we're eating it. It's more the fact of it is a lack of self-restraint. Right. In other words, it's literally the fact of you have no control over it, which then goes right. into a potential an idol worship or right. all these different things. Which could lead to greed. It could lead to lust because you don't have any self-control right so maybe that would be a better word instead of gluttonous a lack lack of self-control l- 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 yeah exactly so so let's go into the Selfishness, question then. lack of self-control uh, be, you know yeah, it, very well. is it even mentioned in the bible because you sure. know if we're talking about the seven deadly sin and it's 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 been a cardinal sin in the sure. church for so long does the bible even say about it sure. and what i find that is interesting i actually just you know copied and pasted this directly from the gospel coalition but it says some will be surprised other than that the actual word gluttony appears in none of the New Testament vice lists. Lists? That's another word I can't say. Lists. In fact, most of the Bible is overwhelmingly positive about food. There are Old Testament feasts, visions of heavenly feasts. Jesus finished his ministry with a meal and instituted a supper, which Baptists, we got to get rid of that little he cracker also, and grapes. We need a meal. I just want to throw in right here uh-huh, real fast uh-huh. that uh, even in his resurrection, resurrected body, wasn't he cooking food on the shore? No, he said, was cooking some fish, bro. And some said, fresh cut Yeah, fish. and said, partake with me. So even in a glorified body, he was He was eating. still <laughs> eating food, right. Um, uh, where is the... Doo, 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 doo. Sorry, I threw you off. Uh, no, no, you're, oh, if, if the New Testament had an overriding concern with food, it is that God's people not be overly concerned about it. Right. Food does not command us in the kingdom of God does not consist of food and drink, which is from Romans 14, uh, Romans 14, 17, and 1 Corinthians 8, 8. No honest reader of the New Testament can deny that Jesus and his apostles were much more concerned about what we do sexually with our bodies than the food that we partake. Mark 7, 21 through 23, 1 Corinthians 6, 12 through 18, and also 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. And where they bring that up is the apostle Paul with food sacrificed unto idols. Sure. He says, now, if you know you're partaking in the worship of this idol— well, yeah, then don't partake of it. But if you're just buying meat in the market, yo, a steak's a steak. Grow that sucker right, up, right. you know? Yep. And so it's not the food that matters. And he even said it's not what goes into the body that defiles it. It's what comes out of the body right. and not even just what out of the body, but what you do with your body. Mm-hmm. And so it's not the fact that Jesus is not concerned about food and how we handle ourselves because we have to give an account for what we've been blessed with. Sure. But God cares way more about what we do with our bodies right. sexually relationally serving, then God cares about the what stewardship of everything. Right. Cause food is fuel, right? Food is fuel. Now I did think this was interesting though. So in the ESV, which we're not sponsored by them. So I'm, I'm sorry, life wafer. CSB all the way. <laughs> um, in the ESV, the word glutton, like the actual word glutton appears four times. And in every instance is paired with the word drunkard. Hmm. Which I think is really interesting. Overindulgence. It's it's the fact of a drunkard is a glutton. Right. And so, which is interesting because Jesus was accused of that, of being a glutton and a drunkard. Because he was hanging out with those who, what, what is it, don't smoke, drink, or chew, and don't roll with those who do. Yeah. Jesus was hanging out with those who do. Those are the only people he was hanging out with. It's true. <laughs> and, and, and the disciples, but, you know, Peter yeah. Flowers had his foot in his mouth. But... Uh, <laughs> But, but, you know, that, that's the only time in the New Testament where the, you, you see this idea of, of being a glutton. And the only time was when the Jewish religious leaders who had a lot, who literally worshipped, I, I would say, the type of eating and food and all these different things, 
they called Jesus a glutton and a drinker because he was sitting down, hanging out, having a good time with with those who really needed to hear the good news about his coming. Right. You know, um, it, it continues, though. It says the word gluttonous shows up one time again alongside a reference to drunkards. That's in Proverbs 23, 20. Two other times we have gluttons, once in quotations from a poet speaking about the lazy Cretans, which is in Titus, and the other time in reference to the company a shameful son keeps. And other passages often associated with gluttony are much more less than that meets the eye. For example, the point of Proverbs 23, 22, put a knife to your throat if you are given to appetite, is not about being ensnared by deceptive hospitality of a rich host, and the same, wait, wait, is about not being ensnared by the deceptive hospitality of a rich host, which goes back to he's a glutton then. And the saying in Philippians 3, 19, their God is their belly, is either a euphemism for sexual sin, see the next phrase, because their glory is their shame, or a reference to the Judaizers' legalistic demands regarding mosaic dietary restrictions. So every time the Bible talks about what it means to be a glutton or whatever the Greek or the the, the Hebrew or the Aramaic word for glutton is, sure. it's always paired with something else. It was never just, yeah, don't, stop eating Swiss cake rolls because you're such a glutton. It's a, right. you are a drunk, it, it, and it's not just don't, it, it, it's not saying right here, someone who got drunk, it was a drunkard, the town drunk, right? Because they are a glutton. And I think, so I think you're right. I think more of it, it would be self-restraint. Mm-hmm. You have no self-restraint of things. Right. And so here's, Whatever so here's be. an honest question then. And this is something that I, I'm being, trying to be very careful in how I ask is, you know, there's a joke of where it's like, I'm glad you go to a therapist. I just eat my feelings like mm-hmm. quotes like that. Mm-hmm. Is that more of just dealing with an improper use of, finding comfort in that because i mean at the end of the day popcorn is my hit man i had a long day i want popcorn i don't know why i want popcorn you know and then some people want ice cream some people or apples i eat a lot of apples um i don't know i guess i've never used food as comfort so i, I can't really you, you just one. enjoy your food i right? i just eat like i eat and when i'm full i'm full that's what i do right well until I started my diet, and now I don't. <laughs> but, you know, but so when I when I hear all these different things, it's the fact that it's a lack of self-control. And so it goes back to, uh, I, I guess this is where it comes back to it being a quote-unquote carnal sin, where it talks about, does it lead into idolatry? Does it lead into well, it, enslavement of it, food? It does. I look at David, mm-hmm. right, with Bathsheba. He had no self-control, and it caused him a heck of a lot of problems. Mm-hmm. It was a sin against Uriah and against Bathsheba and against God and against his kingdom and I mean the list against himself. I mean, so it did lead to that. A gluttonous spirit, a lack of self control, I guess would would be a better way to to explain it, even better than selfishness. I think you hit the nail on the yeah, head. Yeah, just I think, historically, I think, I think it's, it's more around food and I would say food and strong drink. You know, and alcohol. Because eh, about the drunkard. A lot. I think it's talking about social status. Hmm. I, th- so, so a quick question for you. Okay, so here's a thought. This is just off the top of my head, so it might be completely off base. Okay. When we look at that passage in 1 Corinthians talking about the Lord's Supper and how the rich got drunk off of the Lord's Supper and they didn't even let the poor people in, that people were getting sick and dying. Is that what this is also talking about? Could Where be, yeah. uh, uh, let, me, let me pull out the passage real quick because I don't want to just sit here and we just talk about the passage. I want to make sure we... <laughs> actually, you know, get it right. Sure. Uh, but it was talking about, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're hungry, eat before you come. So mm-hmm. that way everybody might come. So people it's were Corinthians. Yeah. It, it's whenever first Corinthians. Yeah. I think? Yeah. Oh, oh, it's hundred percent. First Corinthians. I just don't know what the uh, passage is. 14. No, because that's, no, that's during the last right. Like 13 to 15. Isn't that the love? Like the love 13 chapters. is love. 12 is about the church. Um, do, do, do. So it might be, Food offered unto idols. I'm trying to remember. I know it's in First Corinthians, or it's in Corinthians. Principles it might be, of marriage. Might be Second Corinthians. Lawsuit among believers. Glory in the body and the spirit. Um, Immoral church members. Man, this is a lot of interesting conversation. You just gotta go to Google, man. Just go to Google. All right, you just go to Google and look I'm gonna, at. I'm gonna but go to, you know that that made me have that think of the fact of gluttony if it's un uncontrolled restraint towards food or things for social items because you're rich and can first Corinthians 11 man. So it was 11. That's the first thing I opened. I just probably didn't scroll far enough. Um, let me go. Yeah. To... Cause head coverage at the top. 
There it is, the Lord's Supper. Boom. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 11, 17. We're back in the CSB, ladies and gentlemen. Now, in giving this instruction, I do not praise you since you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For to begin with, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you, and I in part believe it. <laughs> That's actually kind of, I, I never read it that way. Where it's like, I hear about this, and, and I, believe yeah, it. I believe it, which is not good. Um Indeed, it is necessary that there. Uh, in, oh, wait. Indeed, it is necessary that there be factions among you, so that those who are approved may be recognized among you. When you come together, then it is not meant to eat the Lord's supper. For at the meal, each one eats his own supper. So one person is hungry while another person is drunk. Don't you have homes in which to eat or drink, or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? Mm -hmm. And so it's the fact of we have a social status, so we're each going to have our own meal. And you, you bring your meal, we gonna have our own meal. And it's like, it is a separation of social classes in the fact of the uh, just separation of the rich and the poor. But it gets back there to, uh, I think selfishness. I really do. I, I, I mean, I, I, I wholeheartedly believe it's about self-control, but it's about selfishness also. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a mix between the two, uh, because they're selfish and they have no self-control and they're going to eat before everybody else and they don't care mm -hmm. yeah so 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 to, to i don't want to say wrap up the conversation but get into you know just some well, questions i think we need to answer well i think we need to start with the, the like is, is gluttony it, a sin is it a sin i think in the context of being fat obese in our culture it, no not necessarily it could be but it, not necessarily there's, there's potential for it to be but it would have to be taken on a case-by-case -case basis i wouldn't look at a fat person and go it's you're committing be, the sin it, you're, gluttony. you're gluttonous i just wouldn't because I know me, I'm, I'm, I'm overweight and I, <laughs> I know I'm, I'm not gluttonous. So, um, is gluttony the same as obesity? No, I think we've, we've talked about, I think that. we've proved that enough to know that it, it comes from the state of mind and the heart of just cause you're obese doesn't mean you're gluttonous. It, it, I think gluttony means, do you think it's worth asking the question though of saying, am I, you know, I'm just going to say it. Am I obese because of my choices? Like, is that a fair question to ask? For self reflection. Okay, so I'm genuinely asking because. So I think that you, it, no, I, I don't think it's a question that has to be asked just because you're fat. No, I don't think so because it could be just food cho bad food choices. That we got a lot of processed foods now that cause people to be overweight a whole easily. Lot of problems and metabolism has a lot to do with it. You have a faster metabolism than I do, so you can eat more unhealthy things than what I can. I, mean, I, could, I could be the glutton. I, I could be, yeah, you could be the glutton, not me. I could be the healthy one trying to, you know, work out and get in shape and just still be fat, and you could be the one over here eating a whole cake to yourself. And it's like, okay, who's the glutton? You know, and that's why I don't I don't think it's a fair question to ask. I think we should self-examine ourselves because there's a lot of ways that we can be, and I think that if we have lack of self-control in an area, like pornography, like sexual activities with um, an unmarried spouse or mm -hmm. an unmarried person, I guess not. They wouldn't be a spouse, but someone else's spouse. Somebody yeah. else's spouse. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Lying, cheating, stealing. I mean, if we don't have self control and that self restraint over that, I think that ties hand in hand with it. So, um, is gluttony the same as obesity? I, I would say a hard fast no, but it could be depending on the, the situation, the circumstance, self, and self examination. Here's another question, then, though. So, is it wrong to enjoy life then? If gluttony is the sin of overindulgence in things and no self control, is it wrong to enjoy some, for for lack of a better word, is it wrong to enjoy the finer things of life? Uh, I don't. Th I th I think again, you have to get case by case. I think to throw a blanket statement and say you can't enjoy life or you're glutton, I think is. You like how I'm trying to bait you with that one? Uh, y you were. <laughs> be be I mean, yeah. Uh, to me, it's. Uh, I think it could be. It definitely could be if you enjoy life too much and party too hard, and or that's if whatever. you enjoy too much. Like, like you know, like, like I'm on the team, budget. Like, okay, so if you're budgeting hard, where it's like you know, every so often, I want to go to. Like, like, I know some people. It's like they budget hard and they don't spend much in this area. So every so often, they can go to like Ruth's Chris, sure, and get that nice hit. You know, sure. and for them, that's worth it. I can go to McDonald's ten times. They can go to McDonald's zero times. But we spend the same amount of money, right? Yeah, I, I don't. Mean, I, I guess, uh, what does it take to enjoy life? Because I don't have to do any of that Dang, to enjoy life. Dang, you just asked even the bigger question. I don't have to do any of that to enjoy life. So I guess that's a bigger question you got to ask yourself and take up with God on a case-by-case -case basis because I see people when I've done mission work down in Mexico who have nothing yet enjoy life. Mm, and they give. Yeah. They, we, we, they, we heard that I, with uh, with 
but the I oh, I can never pronounce her last name. Beth with back to back ministries. Uh, Gukin Gukin back Gukinberger. Yeah, maybe Gukin. But back to back ministries, yes. and she's like, "There's people that are so giving and so loving, and they don't have well, much." I could tell you a, sto- a quick story yeah, when I was it. in in uh, Mexico when I was in Control Mexico, uh, and this woman had literally it was a stick shack, right? Sticks in the ground, stick shack, and she had a piece of scrap steel, and that was her door that she leaned up against the opening. And you know what? She was the best giver. She Everything she had, she gave. And wow. she enjoyed life. And it's like she had nothing. Like even the bums of America, the the, the homeless people, they, they probably had more because they had a shelter to go to and get hot food and a warm bed to sleep in. And she didn't have that. Hmm. And yet she's happy. It goes back to perspective a little exactly. bit. Exactly. So um, I, I think if you think you have to do these things to enjoy life, yeah, you probably got a bigger problem. <laughs> so then it goes into the next question of, is it wrong for churches and ministries to do these massive feasts and potlucks? I don't and- think so. I think we see I think we see it throughout Scripture. I think well, there's tons of feasts that happen, and the Lord's Supper was not what we do today of, we're going to have this tiny, tiny piece of bread, no, it this was little a juicy cup. No, it was a full-blown, like, hey, we're going to eat. And then after we're done eating, we're going to break bread. <laughs> I was going to try to look it up, but I don't think I'm going to be able to find it. You know, there's a book out there about ministering with food and how in the biblical times, in the Old Testament, food means more than just eating. It normally meant community and fellowship. And Well, even, even throughout, like, I think of the Renaissance period of, like, when agreements were had. And even in, in Middle Eastern times, when had a feast. you always ate afterwards. When, it, when you've made an agreement or you've made a contract, hey, let's eat now. All right, we've done this. Let's eat because it shows a bonding communal thing. So. Right, and so and that's what and, and I wonder if that's part of the demise of the American culture is have we taken away and, and I I have heard this that we've taken away the dinner table and we've taken yep. away a whole lot of we've replaced it with other things like social media and everything else and just TV doing what we want to do right, right exactly so and you know something this is really cool this is this this is for free people my for free. daughter's teacher her second grade teacher. Miss Richards, I don't, I don't know, Hannah, if you're listening. If you are, what's up? If not, I'm gonna make you listen to this one because you get a shout out. She did this activity with the kids, and mm-hmm. to be honest with you, our life was so like hectic, and dinner was not good because of situations with with some of our kids, which with the needs that they have. Sure. And but recently, I'm like, you know what? Let's make it a point to because the start of dinner is always good, and I would always start dinner with just tell me how your day is, and I just want to hear about the day. But then I started flipping to, okay, so Miss Richards created this little jar that the kids made and they colored. And inside of it, there's 30 prompts or it's like 20 prompts to ask your family and everyone goes around the table and talks mm. about it. And so, and, you know, the, the little kids call it the game. And they'll be like, Sadie, uh, they call it Sadie's game. And I'll be like, all right, Sadie, do you want to play your game tonight? Because the little kids know what it is. Right. And she'll go, she'll pull out a question. And like the other day was, um, what what did you do today that made you uh, that that made you feel happy or no no what's something you did today that made you feel good hmm. or made you feel smart and other ones right. was what was some way that you served somebody today hmm. so and, and some of the questions are really funny like yeah. there, there's legitimately humorous questions that sure. are really fun to hear the kids talk right but then there's some where like i'm hearing my six-year-old son i'm hearing my eight-year-old and ten-year-old daughters and even my four-year-old daughter say how they saw someone who needed help when they helped them. So, you know, just going back to the dinner table fact of Miss Richard did that, and that's been a big blessing to our family. Awesome. I'll bring it back to the table. So so should we do potlucks? Bring them back. Go for it. Bring them back. (laughs) All right, so here's a question that I hear all the time, right? right? And it's the fact of can we rightfully say that pastors like to preach about certain sins, but it looks like they're ignoring one. You, you talk about like ignoring this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, dep- I, I think it depends on the church you're in, I think. And, and here's where it comes from, right? The independent Baptist, sure. the independent, independent fundamental Baptist church historically is known as having very overweight and unashamed overweight preachers. But sure. they preach against every other sin Except, and it, but you look at them and you're but like. But again, is it be, they're overweight because they eat too much or is it they're overweight because of another issue? And again, I think that has to be, you can't look at their, I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong for any Christian to look at another Christian and go, you're overweight, you're gluttonous. I think it's wrong because you don't know that. You have no idea what their story right. is. Right, and I'm thinking of ones where it's like, cause I, I, there's one that pops in my head because he talks all the time about the fact that, you know, he loves going to buffet every night. Sure. I'm like, but buddy, that's that's not good self-control. Well, it depends. Do you like to go to buffets? I do, but I rarely go. Okay, but 
you still like to go, right? Hundred percent. New China. Mm. So I mean, is it bad that you go then? Because you're gonna just go into a buffet, right? If and that's if a you're, valid question. If you're gonna hold somebody to that standard, then you have to hold yourself to that. It standard. sounds like and we're I, going back to the plank versus the spag. I, I you know? think I, I think we're missing the bigger picture here. I, I think that yeah, well, you're focusing in on food, and I think gluttony is much bigger than a food talk. Mm-hmm. I think it has nothing to do with weight. I really don't. It's in how you treat and handle food and I think drinks it, and indulgence. I think it meant something back when it was a indulgences? first Is when, right when it was first originally deemed as a seven deadly sin and and the glut, gluttonous aspect back then. It was a different culture and it meant something back then. And I think what it meant is lack of self control and selfishness, and that's what it meant. And so that's what we got to look at when we're calling people out. All right, are you don't have self control and you have some selfishness because those are the issues that we need to deal with. Mm. And not deal with like, hey, I'm going to shame you. It's a, hey, this is what God says about it. No, I'm I'm stepping out of the picture. You take it up with God for what you want to do there. Because I'm only called to remind and hold accountable. I'm not called to judge. Mm. There's a difference between that. I, I think we read the word judge, you know, you should judge your brother and all this. And we're like, oh, we got to we gotta point my finger and, and Bible but bash But brother him. also means a relationship. Like, if, right. like, like you've spoken into my life. Right. In very loving but hard truth. Sure. But you do it out of love. And again, you know, because, but we have a such tight knit relationship. And, you know, and I never come pointing my finger like this either. No, you come with an and open you don't, hand going, <laughs> you don't come pointing your finger or slapping me upside the head. You come with gentleness and love. And that's how you approach it. Hey, Chris, I've just noticed this and I want to talk to you about this. And because we have that relationship, I'm open to hearing it. Mm. So that's where it's at. It, it comes out of community. Right, exactly. In relationships. So yep. last question, and then I'm going to read a quote. Okay. Should we view gluttony as a true deadly sin? In the aspect of lack of restraint and, and self-control and selfishness, yes. So you think it was good that they categorized this as, as a I think it's been, a vice? I think it's been uh, misunderstood in today's culture of what it is. Uh, if you look at the culture of what it was brought too, and, and some like some of the quotes you read of when they made up the seven deadly sin list, it meant something. And mm-hmm. this is what it meant. Let's break it down. It meant lack of self-control and uh, selfishness about them. That's what it meant back then. So it's a good word if it's understood. <laughs> so that's where I, that's kind of where I want to leave. I like it. And you know, the more I think about it, it's the fact of whenever you see it in scripture, it's never paired with a good thing. Right. You know, so obviously... But like, it's not good. What is a drunkard, right? When it's paired with a drunkard, what's a drunkard? That means you have zero self control. Well, it means you drink right? too much, right? right? You you, you won overboard with it. You won overboard with it consistently. Yeah, right. So it, it was too much lack of self control. Was a big thing. Mm-hmm. You had no self control. So I think that's where it lies. I like it. I like it. Let me end with this last quote. So I did not. In- I intentionally did not read this as part of that big paragraph of is gluttony mentioned in the Bible? Is it a sin from the Gospel Coalition article? Right. And I should have brought the the uh, author of the article, but I, I forgot to grab that. Um, but it says so. This is the last part of all this. So we just finished up. You know the the reference to the Judaizers legalistic demands regarding uh, mosaic dietary restrictions of what their their God is their belly means. Sure. So it continues and says so. So what does the sin of gluttony look like? When we take time to open our Bibles and read the relevant passages, we find that gluttony is much more than just eating a McRib sandwich. And that the, part, McRib. the McRib. <laughs> I, 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 I want to I eat the McRib. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had one. In uh, honesty. I don't like I, I'm okay. I'm okay not having one. Yeah. I had meatloaf tonight, and it was amazing. I don't want a McRib. Uh, but we find that gluttony is much more than eating a McRib sandwich, and that partaking in food is much less of a concern than partaking in sexual sins. The composite picture from these verses suggests that a glutton is a loafer, a partier, and a profligate. That's a fun word, a profligate? A profligate. He is the prodigal son wasting his life on riotous living. She's the girl on spring break who thinks the pinnacle of human existence is to eat, drink, and hook up. A wastrel, a, a waste, oh, they, man. A wastrel? She, wastrel. A wastrel living for the weekend. Oh, oh, you live just to party for the weekend. Right. A big city high fly who cares nothing except for indulging in high society. A ne'er do all who takes uh, uh, who takes lifestyle cues from the Hangover franchise. Wow. So basically, the person who just who just indulges themselves into all the bad. Things. Literally, eat, drink, and be married for tomorrow we die. Right. Like, yep. I, like I think that's what it's leading to. Is you know. Yep. Just eat, drink, be merry. Who, who who really cares about what who happens gives a, tomorrow? As the Kenyan guy says, a rat's patookie. 
Batuki? No, Batuti. Whatever. A rat's Batuti. He did not say rat's Batuti, but that's, that's Whatever. So funny. Batu- I wish he Batuki? said rat's Batuti. Batuki? But, but either way, so I, I think it's good to, to just wrap up the conversation with gluttony has so much more to do than just food. It is living a lifestyle of self-indulgence, not caring about the future, not caring about tomorrow, not caring about your neighbor, right. and just pure selfishness because eat, drink, and be merry for, you know, drink up, you hearties, yo ho. <laughs> yo ho, yo ho. <laughs> a party life for me. <laughs> AKA, don't be Jack Sparrow, ladies Actually, and gentlemen. That's, it's a pirate life, but the you know, pirate life. I, did, I did switch it there. Any last thoughts before we get into fun facts with Fuller, my dude? I, I'm good, man. I am good as well, so All let's right, do it. Let's do it. Time for... Fun facts with <laughs> <laughs> That laugh every time. I had the same laugh that follows that laugh, too. It's just hilarious. <laughs> it's so cute. Well, let's do the fun fact because we're right on time. We're right at that hour mark right we're now. We're usually about an hour and six to an hour and 15 and this minutes This is right a now, new so. listener who has just found us every episode since episode wow. one. You have had to bring a fun fact. To the episode so like, to send people off. This is like 138 something fun facts or something I don't like know that. At this point, man. <laughs> Although we have to subtract one because I did one twice unknowingly. Yeah, you did. You did do one twice Sorry. unknowingly. But the first one I sprung on you and you just had to pull one out of thin I, air. I can't believe I did. <laughs> yeah, you did. But you're you're full of stuff, man. I, I'm fuller. <laughs> such a terrible all right, so all the, right, give us the fun fact to end the episode the man. fun fact of the day did you know mark and listeners the wick of a trick candle you know the candles that relight oh, the trick candles okay the trick candles has a small amount of magnesium in them when you light the candle you are also lighting the magnesium when someone tries to blow out the flame the magnesium inside the wick continues to burn and in just a split second or two or three it relights the wick oh because you can't put magnesium out with <sighs> lack of oxygen because it'll reignite so you how do to, you put out magnesium then you have to actually like there's a couple ways to do it right so you have to either completely get rid of atmosphere so put like a like a cone over it or something like that okay. and it'll fizzle out eventually or you can get like special chemicals like they use in like magnesium but eventually fires. They, eventually they blow out don't they eventually like, like a trick candle eventually, eventually the magnesium burns out of the wick yeah Oh, that okay. Yeah, that's a that's good fun. I did not know it that. It is a fun. I was like, no way. I just learned it myself. You know how in life there's certain things where you're like, I wonder how that works, and then there's other things where it's like, I don't care how that works. That's it's, awesome. It's just awesome. That's that's the end of the candle. I'm like, I, didn't, <laughs> I never knew. Me, it. I never really cared how it worked, except that it did. I was just looking for a fun fact, and I'm like, no way, really. That that's is awesome. Really neat. <laughs> well, that is a good way to end the thing. We talked about we talked about gluttony food, and we ended with the birthday candle. <laughs> 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 i love it man and guys we love you guys out there as well out there in rtc land we call you guys our rtc fam for a specific reason and that's because we feel like we have a really cool community with you guys we do just like always reach out to us on instagram or facebook real talk christian podcast you just got to search for it and you'll find it literally everywhere even if you're going to spotify and just type in christian podcast you'll find us so there it's it pretty is. easy to find us and you can go to the website real talk christian podcast.com at this point we'll see where we're at with the store we've been having a lot of issues of them we're, just taking down stuff we're so working we'll on see it. we'll see hopefully, where we're at, at this hopefully point. we're up right now we'll see where we're at at this point right <laughs> but seriously if you have any conversation you would love for us to tackle even if it's a quick conversation and hey maybe we can answer in an instagram reel yeah that'd be pretty cool oh, feel be- free to send us a message oh. write us a comment send us an email we read every single email that you guys send us as well yeah. or if you think there'd be a really cool opportunity for us to bring a guest onto a show that you know i was gonna throw it out there Hit give us, us their name because yeah. we trust you guys more than these random people who just send us random emails of random books of although Arthur's sometimes book. we've pulled people on and they've been really great and they've people. been tremendous yeah. absolutely so. and some of our most downloaded episodes came from random connections like that like uh jess yeah. roan yeah, uh, I think Jeff, I said that right, yeah, right? Just Ron? Just Ronnie. Just Ronnie. I said that wrong. Okay. Yeah. Just Ronnie, the Lucas Project. The Lucas Project. We got connected with by somebody else and a yep. whole bunch of other guests we had connected with Beth somebody from else. Back to Back Ministry, uh, Coat. Coat we got connected with through Beth, I believe. Andrew right? Wood was also Andrew, through Beth yep, yep, and yep, so. all these different people. T- Tibby's, I don't know. Tibby's agent His reached, agent out, reached to us. out to us. That so, was awesome. So I'm going to take my statement back, ladies and gentlemen, because that was obviously not a truly correct statement. <laughs> but either way, we love you guys. Thanks for hanging out with us again over here in RTC. But hey, I guess we should send them off, huh, Fuller? Let's do it. All right. So until next time, take it easy.